All right, hello and welcome everyone. So today we are going to talk about Empyrean at large and mostly about Railjack and its current state at the moment. And as you can almost certainly tell by the title of this video, it's not in great shape. It's really, really unfortunate that this update had so much potential to be so, so good, but has just an intense amount of problems. So we're going to talk about it. Now, at the top here, I've outlined some kind of baseline stuff that is the biggest two issues with Railjack. And that is number one, and this is number one, the most important thing that is wrong with Railjack at current is that the combat is extremely unsatisfying because it is poorly balanced. The numbers associated with you and your Railjack and your Arcwing and all that stuff as compared to the numbers associated with the enemies is way the fuck out of whack. It is not fun to perform combat, which is kind of the entire thing. And that definitely needs to change. And we'll talk more about why I feel that way when we get to some of these other issues. Besides that, the second most important thing is that progression has no real structure whatsoever. The way that you progress in Railjack is either completely and totally at the whim of RNG or is just not significant progression for the amount of extreme effort that the game is asking you uh, to put in. With that, Wreckage Repair, which is a way that you can progress, incentivizes you to not upgrade until you can get to Mark 3 items, which means you completely skip Mark 1 and Mark 2, which means you don't get any upgrades until you are in the final area of Railjack. And this feels extremely pay-to-win with Rush Drones because the resource amounts that you're getting are just pitiful compared to the amounts needed to actually repair these items that you're getting at Mark 3, which are the only things even arguably worth getting. And with all that, if you get all that stuff done, the Railjack itself is still not even worth piloting without multiple sub 2% drops that need to be maxed out with Dirac that you're earning in missions. And that also requires you to combine those less than 2% drops that are maxed out and in a max grid with Mark III gear to even get a functioning Railjack in the last area. Now, for that, that's a lot of information. I'm going to show it off in-game a little bit and talk about it. Because I was initially really excited for Railjack. It looks really cool. Uh, building it seemed pretty reasonable. All kinds of really good shit was going down with like the potential of this thing. And the stuff that we had shown seemed like it could be potentially exciting. And I'm just going to go ahead and say I've put in the fucking work to try and make this fun. And it hasn't worked out so far. So what have I got so far? I have full Mark III gear. I have this Zekti shield array. Uh, also, by the way, for those that don't know, the rolls on all of this fucking gear are random on if they are good or not. So even if it drops for you, it might be a piece of shit. But this shield is, as far as I can tell, the only good kind because it gives me bonus damage, which you so fucking desperately need. Aside from that, I have an engine that is honestly mediocre, but it gives me a damage increase, so I guess that's fine. And it's better than the Mark III that you can get from research, so it's serviceable at least. And then the most important part that everyone and their mom is complaining about right now is getting a reactor. I was reasonably lucky and I have a plus 73 avionics reactor um this is the best kind of reactor you can get but it can randomly roll to be a plus 100 avionics capacity so if you don't get one that is 70 plus get fucked and go back to the like less than five percent chance that this thing even has to drop I'm fairly certain it is and that feels like shit. Plain and simple, that sucks. In addition to that, I have full Mark III weapons. And on top of that, this Vidar Cryophon Mark III is also rolled for plus 41.7 weapon damage. 
And that's really important because, again, you need every single little bit of weapon damage you can get to even hope to God that your weapons are going to be able to damage the enemies you're fighting. So I have that. And then on the side guns, these don't really matter, uh, but they're also Mark III. And on the bottom, I have the Tycho Seeker Mark III and the Galvark Mark III. Neither of which have been particularly impressive because you need to build the ammo for these with resources. And they do a little bit of damage, but it's just so much of a resource investment if you're going to be using these to fight enemies. It's kind of a giant pain in my fucking ass. So I have all these things. And then on top of that, I have avionics. So you'll notice that this is not like completely filled out. And that is because I have used up pretty much all of my avionics capacity, maxing out the less than 2% drop bulkhead to give myself at least some fucking health and the less than 2% drop hyper strike, which is absolutely 100% required for your weapons to do anything to enemies, pretty much. If you want your Railjack to even be able to scratch enemies, you need this, and you need it maxed out, and also, you need it on a maxed out grid point, so it has three extra fucking ranks. Additionally, I have a hull weave. This isn't the best one you can get, but it's pretty good, and it's what I can afford to put in here with the avionics, and it's maxed out. I have a polar coil. This is the strongest one you can get. This makes it so, thank God, my weapons don't overheat as fast, even though they still overheat really fucking quickly, even with this maxed out. Uh, and then, for more damage, I have a section density, which is turret critical damage, and then a predator, which is uh, turret critical chance. So... Hopefully, I crit and can do some more damage. I also have Last Stand in here for damage, so whenever my hull is severely damaged, I do a little bit more damage, which sometimes comes up. And then otherwise, Conic Nozzle doesn't really matter here. Uh, it just makes me a little faster, and Heat Sink makes it so I take a little bit less damage in my ship. Outside of that, uh, these two abilities that I have, I have the Particle Ram, which is maxed out. I have the Seeker Volley, which is maxed out. This fires 50 homing missiles, and by God, you wish it did any fucking damage. Uh, it, you, it doesn't kill anything past Earth. So there's that. And that's a problem we're going to get back to in a moment. I have done the work. Also, this is the payload menu where you can recharge your shit. And I'm at nines in all of my intrinsics. So it's not like I don't have the bonuses that these yield. And keep in mind for something we're about to discuss, which is how Arcwing is handled in this, that I have all of the rank eight bonuses boosting up my Arcwing, including like just general plus 25% damage and shit. So I've done the shit to really find out where Railjack goes. All I'm really missing is 10s in all of these, and they don't give you anything important. Like, I get Remotely Repair, which is not worth it because it costs you additional resources. Uh, reflex Aim, which, as far as I've heard from everyone who has it, uh, it is a downgrade from just regularly aiming yourself. Uh, ramming Speed, which is apparently bugged to not work. Uh, and then Join Warp which is just a quality of life thing more so than anything else. You can teleport to your other crew members from the ship, which honestly, probably the best out of these four because it's just like a utility thing that maybe comes up eventually, um, but not important for determining the power of the Railjack or anything of that nature. So I just wanted to show this stuff off to really get across that I've done the fucking legwork on testing this shit out and getting the stuff I need to like really see where this goes okay so there's that now let's talk about some more of the notes in here i've got some arcwing stuff so arcwing problems with the imperian update the amisha is literally the only arcwing worth using because enemies in this are so hilariously overtuned that you need to be completely invincible to even hope to survive which is what the amisha's one does in addition to that, enemies are so much more mobile than you, you need to use the Amishas 3 to slow them down so that you can pump entire magazines of ammo into them just so that you can fucking kill them because they take that many shots from art guns, which I am going to show off in this video just how ridiculous this shit is. Art guns are shit and do pitiful damage even if you have every single mod and all the forma in the world for these art guns. They're just not satisfying to use, and it is a slog to kill enemies this way. Most of that, I hope and I hope is I hope this part is true. Most of that seems to be because DE introduced a new damage model uh, that barely could be considered like a real system that is finished in any capacity. 
to just like randomly throw on these missions and it's the damage that the railjacks do and it's the damage that your arc guns have their damage converted into doing which is not only really confusing but also severely unclear and because the damage types are clearly unfinished and a lot of them don't even have status effects to utilize it's just a broken shitty mess of trying to use the arc wing but early on your arc wing is your only fucking choice because your railjack is so completely shit not worth it that you kind of must have a maxed out arc wing to even start progressing and for most of the missions that are in railjack you're just going to be flying out in a squad of four in your arc wings and then just like ramming your face into the enemy and holding down the fire trigger until hopefully they die and it's not good with that railjack missions it is literally and actually just the exact same mission 25 times with different numbers on it and we're going to show that so back to the game real quick like let's jump on in and look at what these missions uh are on the map there's 25 of them total not counting free flight uh not counting free flight there are 25 missions and free flight just is what it is there's just Meditation. nothing there and you can fly around we make our opponent flinch, we but each and every won. one of the missions here which i will show you that i have completed i've completed everything on earth all these missions everything on saturn all these missions and everything in the veil all these missions every single one is kill x fighters kill y cruise ships all of them are the exact same mission the only difference between these three zones is that on earth you're going to kill 30 fighters and two cruise ships on saturn you're going to kill 60 fighters and four cruise ships and in the veil you're going to kill 90 fighters and six cruise ships in addition to that objective there is sometimes a little tiny other objective where you walk into a station and press a button and that's the entire extra objective that is all that you get and all of these missions that they've put in here are, are just the same mission they're all just exterminates that's it that's the whole thing of railjack is there it's just all the exact same missions and honestly i'd be okay with 25 of the exact same mission with minor differences if it was enjoyable but it's balanced so poorly and so like wildly unacceptably like the uh, the gear that i have currently this like maxed out mark three amazing intrinsics like the best avionics i can acquire and equip all that stuff that i've gotten from getting to veil proxima feels like the level of power i should be at like leaving earth like i need to be at least like five times stronger than where i am right now for the content in the veil to be enjoyable because if i take all this insane gear that you can only get in the veil proxima all these like mark threes all this shit, and all of the like sub two percent drops that you get kind of throughout these areas back to earth it is pretty enjoyable because i have the best gear available in the first fucking area and it's just unacceptable for it to be balanced that way it's just not balanced for anyone to have a good time at all like the the end game strength of your railjack feels like what you should have like after a few missions of collecting avionics on earth like that's what it feels like and then like whenever you get mark ii weapons on saturn those mark ii weapons should be able to like easily deal with the enemies that you're going to be encountering in the veil and the mark three weapons from the veil should be like really strong and feel great in the veil like that's your rewards that you're getting in the veil and they don't feel adequate for the content you needed to do to get them it is wildly wildly baffling that that the that, that de could have played this and enjoyed themselves because it's just a slog it's, it's just a slog now before we show off any um arcwing stuff i'm going to talk about like the good stuff in arcwing so far uh and the two weapons that are any good are the singus and the uh imperator vandal that's pretty much your only two options and i think if i wanted to form my imperator vandal two more times it would probably be the best one overall 
but it does need more forma to get there. Uh, so I haven't done that yet. Generally, I've been using the Singus. Uh, and it's been pretty universal with a lot of people I've talked to that, like, the Singus is, if not the best, it's second best. I'm personally leaning towards the Imperative Vandal again. I need to form it to really test it. But I've used the Imperative Vandal, and it's pretty good. It's about equal with my Singus currently. Um, the Singus, with this build, which contains a lot of very hard-to-get mods, uh, has been what I've been using. 100% status is, like, basically completely required because the statuses that are functioning... Uh, are the only thing that does any damage with this new system. Like, I know here on the left, you can see it says, like, radiation cold slash puncture impact, but that's a lie. This damage gets converted into some other bullshit damages whenever you actually go into the mission. And, oh, it's... That's a whole nother issue that they would ship a thing with no UI to tell you what anything does, and it is really unfortunate. Anyway, though, um... I'm going to show off, like, just, like, this is, like, maxed out Arcwing shit. Like, this is the Amisha build I'm running. Um, like, it's got, I've got max efficiency, my abilities cost minimum possible, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't have Prime Morphic Transformer on here, because, like, even though I can level it, I would need to form of the Amisha, and I don't want to do that. Uh, especially not with how DE is apparently talking about nerfing the Amisha when it's the only Arcwing that can even fly around in this content. Uh, and not get evaporated. But they're talking about nerfing it for some reason. That is, that baffles me. Uh, but we have all that stuff. And we're going to show what this Arcwing weapon does to the enemies in the Veil. And it's very indicative of the gameplay you're going to find everywhere else. Uh, it's slightly faster kill times on Earth. Um, but, like, I want to show you guys what you can expect to be doing before you get Mark Three things... Uh, in the veil. We're just going to fly out. And, oh, also, I'm just going to show the main strategy for Railjack in general, and that is to get in the pilot seat at the beginning of a mission and then back the fuck up as far as you can so enemies can't attack your Railjack and kill it while you go out in your Arcwing. This is the main strategy that pretty much everybody has to employ uh, early on and also later if you're going to solo, uh, is you just get in the pilot seat of your Railjack and back up as far as you can. Uh, and get really, really far away so that the enemies don't come and kill your Railjack and fail you the mission. Uh, yeah, that is that is the way this is being played. Unfortunately. And we are going to show off like some of like the actual like Railjack's damage uh, out here. Because it's slightly better than my Arcwing now that I have it completely maxed out. But it's not great. Um... But yeah, so we're going to get up into this big thing so that we can actually get back to the map from our Railjack being very far away. And also, I, I really want to make it clear that, like, it's not that Railjack is, like, loss of all hope. Because, like, very objectively, I think, what I just did on the Railjack was fucking cool. Like, getting launched out of, like, the big, just, like, Arcwing launcher and getting shot towards the map and all that stuff is neat. Um... But it, it, it's really just the combat feel, and you guys are about to see it. And if you haven't seen it, prepare to be disappointed. Also, this is the thing that we do with the Amisha to get energy. Uh, you hit four and then ram your face into a rock, uh, because you're going to need max energy to sustain your abilities, even with max efficiency uh, that we're getting from a bunch of the intrinsics that we have, plus our efficient transferal being ranked 10 and maxed out and all that shit. You slow everybody down to a crawl, and then you do this. This is uh, what you can expect to be doing. These are the lowest tier little baby nothing enemies. And you uh, pretty much have to fly directly into them and unload uh, an entire magazine almost. Uh, it's less than that because I have magazine extension on. Uh, because all that matters is the status that you're applying. And keep in mind, this is... Like, one of the two, like, halfway decent, like, okay-ish weapons that I've used here. With a completely maxed out build. If you try and use something like the Grattler, it is sad. It is depressing how little damage it does. The Grattler might as well not damage these enemies. It's also worth noting that enemies in this area can put down a giant healing field that constantly heals their allies. Um... And that will make it take 
even longer to kill each of these enemies. Yeah, this. This is this is the Arcwing gameplay. And keep in mind, your like bullets have travel time now because they made it so that all, everything has travel time uh, here. So if, if I just let this guy go like actually full speed, you're gonna have to lead pretty significantly, or you're not gonna hit the enemy, which leads to you missing a whole whole lot. Um, which leads to you having to use even more magazines of bullets uh, to kill the enemies in this area and others. Oh, and this this enemy uh, is immune to status. So one second. Okay, there's that. So there's that. I, I think I think that tiny group. By the way, twenty out of ninety. Uh, that took. Oh, the the timer's wrong. But that took an amount of time. Here, I'll just put it on screen. I'll I'll put the timer in and post. Uh, that's how long it took just to kill 20 fighters. And because the fighters are like really stupid and sometimes like go off and kill themselves, that might not even have actually been me killing 20 of them. So that's how this feels to do Arcwing in Railjack. And it's not good. Uh, and you know what? We're actually just going to I'm gonna teleport back and I'm going to bring the Railjack out here to fight some of these other enemies so you can get a feel for how it is they with like a completely maxed friends. out railjack. Enemy cruise ship has punched in. And I do want to express that this railjack is like pretty much as strong as it's gonna get. Like I have all the maneuverability mods. Like I'm gonna turn on this like giant particle ram that I have, um, which is gonna do a little bit of damage to enemies in front of me. Uh, like I'm gonna be doing it up as pretty much as much as it can be done. Like here's like a great example. This is a maxed out missile barrage ability. Nothing, basically. That's the, that's the minuscule nothing damage that we just did. Incoming ram sleds, about to These, like, max out Kriotra that are rolled with, like, a really high damage bonus, and I have all the best avionics. The little baby bitch fighters take two shots, and this is, like, a close range only thing. So, like, I basically have to just hope to God that I, um... That I crit. Because if I if I don't crit, I pretty much I can't one shot these enemies. And you can see that my I have to be really close. Because like that shot did no damage because I was just slightly far away. These these are shotguns on the front of my spaceship. And they're they are not even one shotting these like nothing baby enemies. And keep in mind, I have intrinsics that like whenever I'm boosting and stuff, I get enhanced damage, which I am using, and that's what I'm getting to most times whenever these enemies actually die. This is the the sad state of affairs with uh, with Railjack. Like three shots, and in the bottom left, you can see how fast I overheat. Keep in mind that is with the best thing to prevent me from overheating. Like this, like giant Railjack ship that I'm using has this much trouble with like just regular sized fighters. Killing that enemy overheated my shotgun, even though I had them like just right there in front of me to be shot and i i have the upgrades that make it so that like i overheat for less time and over like i make it harder to overheat and all that kind of shit and it it's it's bad like this is with the like best shit that i can get and like the enemies are like so much more maneuverable than your ship is and this is with nine piloting like it's not like i'm missing some extra mechanic or something like that and the, these Fighters fields here are like the giant healing fields uh and then like these cruise ships uh your railjack even though it is like uh, the equivalent of the grenier cruise ship um you can't damage this at all like even if i use my q and fire missiles you can see like this does this does essentially nothing to this uh and it is just absolutely pitiful and useless and it, and also the big bottom like giant cannon that's on the bottom of your railjack even that doesn't do really any damage to these cruise ships at this level. It just like falls off and becomes completely useless. Like the stuff that they showed off where that big cannon kills cruise ships on dev streams and stuff, th that just doesn't work in the higher levels of uh, of gameplay. Like it just stops functioning and stop stop stops being what it was like supposed to be. Like it just like look at this enemy. That's that's a regular enemy, and it takes so many shots. And this is with as good as the gear is gonna get. Like it doesn't go above this unless maybe there's a, a cry, cryophon that I can like roll that has plus 300% damage. I don't know. I don't know what the limit is on like how strong my cryophon can get. 
and like that's just how it is like there's enemies on my ship while i'm explaining this um but yeah like i'm in like catastrophic failure and like stuff like that and like obviously you'd have a crew normally like just to show off like the damage stuff it's pitiful it's pitiful and it's sad and it, it's just no it's just not fun to do like there is currently a thing that you can do, which is what I really would advise everyone to do, uh, which is where you just equip Rhino and you use Rhino's three to buff yourself and then pilot the Railjack. So you get over 300% damage uh, because that interaction does work with the turrets on your Railjack. Just to make your Railjack kind of do any damage at all, you kind of need to be Rhino with a buffer build. And that's like clearly not the intention of DE to have that buff work on your Railjack. But it, sh it says to me that, like, the damage your Railjack does whenever it's at the level mine is needs to be jacked way up. Like, it needs to be multiplied by, like, four, by, like, five. Something's got to give, and this shit needs to be way better than it is. Because it's just unsatisfying and not good. And on, like, a completely different note, we're going to take this ship and show it off on Earth. Because on Earth, when now that it's maxed out there's right. actually cool shit we can do and it feels good to play the problem is when you're on earth when you're there doing the earth missions it doesn't feel like it's like i'm about to show it's not gonna be this way like let's just go to uh not one of the early ones because these are like the lowest level possible um but like let's just go to like the the bender cluster let's go with that one we'll just go here and i'll show off what these abilities do in this area and it's so much more satisfying because they work as opposed to fucking not uh, and that's really the difference. And I'm not doing any, like, rhino shenanigans or any of that stuff, because I do feel like DE is going to change that, uh, and that that stuff is not intended. Um, but yeah, like, so now I have this, like, particle ram that I've maxed out and all this stuff, and now whenever I ram into enemies, they, like, actually explode and die, which is, like, a really novel concept to have this big, giant energy thing that I, like, worked on and maxed out and spent a bunch of gear on. Like, it actually killing enemies wild style right like this thing that i put into this like drifting ability that i have that lets me like boost forward and kill a bunch of things with the ram like this stuff feels cool because like the abilities are working like they're 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 doing what they're supposed to do like these enemies over here i can fucking take this get a get a line on these dudes and fire hella missiles and like these enemies are gonna die from this right like that's that's what you want right once you've maxed out this ability it's gonna do significant damage to maybe the slightly tougher enemies so then you're gonna be able to like ram them and kill them and you're gonna be able to kill the enemies and like for cruise ships sure you don't need to be able to kill cruise ships with just like your regular weapons but at this level this giant gun down here can be used or your like teammates can board it all right i can't do it because you usually need teamwork to kill the cruise ships and i'm totally fine with that but for like the regular enemies and how i'm dealing with them like this should really be the way it is like with with the like quality of the gear i have and like the effort that i went in that, that went into like making it this way these like regular just uh just enemies sh should die like this like i should be able to, like turn and be like ah yes more more fighters fucking get the missiles ready and fuck them up like firing all these missiles out just like watching all these dudes explode and like feeling like my gear is, is, is doing its stuff the problem is is it should feel like this at like the amount of work that i have put into this system it should feel like this in the veil because this is enjoyable for me like being like haha my max out here just ram through all these dudes and kill them all and like the amounts of uh enemies that you need to kill like it being like 60 or 90 or what have what have you uh in these areas is totally fine whenever you can just chew through them and then you can rely on your allies to like board cruise ships and take those out and do side objectives and like still have someone on repairs because i think the enemy damage output is fine obviously it's low he like the, the enemy damage output for how well that they can take you down whenever you're upgraded um is like pretty reasonable across all the areas i think like the survivability of your railjack once you have these upgrades i think is fine but it, it's just your damage output like just doesn't feel right because like it, it just needs to be buffed massively like these maxed out abilities that i'm using to kill like these swarms of enemies it, it just needs to be changed because it can be enjoyable like the mechanics are here for me to have a good time like whenever i have this like piloting stuff uh leveled up and um all that like i have like the, the dodge in the ship and 
Like, I, I can do, like, the drifting thing and do a boost. Like, just do this and, go, like, go nice and fast and, like, get what I want and, like, be able to, like, do circle strafing on enemies and shit. And, like, I can do all the stuff and it's enjoyable. The controls are good. Uh, the way the guns fire is honestly, like, totally fine. Like, I enjoy this. The only thing I would would want to add to, like, the way the guns work on the front of the ship is, like, maybe I can hold a button um, to be able to, like, uh, get, like, disjoin turning and aiming from one another, where, like, I could hit C or whatever and then just aim the guns and keep my ship, like, exactly where it is. Like, that might be cool. But, like, th th this stuff is all doable. Like, D, very clearly, like, the people who designed, like, how these abilities look and, like, just, like, the UI is, like, pretty nice and clean here in general. And, like, everything looks so cool. It's just that the, the numbers really aren't there to back it up. Like, plain and simple. Uh, because, like, on Earth, I can have, like, all this all this stuff and it's just a good time. Uh, and, like, you can get into this and, like, aim at one of these dudes, fire yourself onto one of these cruise ships to board them. Like, this kind of stuff right here, like, this, this feels good. And, like, boarding a ship... Uh, like, the, the balance of, like, boarding a ship where we, we get on the ship, and then there's, like, the reactor. Uh, take, take your weapon and, like, destroy this. And, like, that blows up, and then this ship is on meltdown. Use the Omni to teleport back to your ship. Get back on the guns. There's a whole good loop here with how this stuff can feel. But it, it's just not quite there. Like, that's that's really the whole thing is that, like, it's not quite there because the the numbers just need to be better plain and simple that's that's the whole thing is that the numbers need to be better and if they can do that i think this mode will be a big success as they expand upon it because right now like i said it is still a problem that um that it's just all the same mission type but that's a very solvable problem they can design more missions for this they can do more things with the systems in place as long as the balance feels good to play and that's where we are right now is that the balance doesn't feel good to play like no matter how much work you put into it like no matter where like you put your dirac and level your stuff up and like up your grid and get all this gear and get lucky with reactors no matter how far you get there the combat is is just not balanced well it's not it's not balanced to be enjoyable and respect your time in missions and it really it really needs to change it really does just need to change because it has so much potential. That's really the thing, is I see so much potential there uh, where it could be so enjoyable and so fun and a thing that I do really want to do. And with that stuff, there's... Let, let, let's get back a little bit, like, from, like, kind of the end, the end point of this whole video. Let's talk about, like, the wreckage repair stuff. Real, real quick, like... Um, let's go back to the game real quick. Let's just talk about the wreckage repair stuff, because this is a really important point that a lot of other people have spoken to. Uh, but whenever we have all this gear and stuff, let's let's say my my Mark III weapons. I have some Mark III weapons here. Uh, whenever we go to repair this stuff, these th this is the stuff that you need in order to repair this stuff. And I have crafted two Mark III um, armaments for the bottom of my ship here, so you can actually see the in the entirety of the resources I've completely spent because. We're going to talk about the, the thing that is the reason for that. I have spent all of this. So it's 6,000 titanium uh, and like 5,000 diodes, 300 asteroids, 7 null stones, that stuff. I spent that on this. And also, I spent the 6,000 titanium uh, and like these other materials here on this. And as you can see, the titanium is kind of the bottleneck. So I've spent 12,000 titanium total out of like the 16,000 or so that I've acquired at all in my time playing Railjack. Keep in mind, I've played more than 30 hours of this mode, and I was that was all I was able to make was the two Mark III's. I don't have enough to make any more of those weapons. And if we look at the repair costs for this stuff, just this weapon alone, this Vidar uh, Mark III, cost me 12,000 titanium. And I, I'm pretty sure they don't all cost 12,000 titanium. Like, this one costs 15,000 titanium. Not really making... This any easier for me, Warframe, to try and give you a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, but here we are. Um, and I've only collected like 16,000 titanium. This is one gun. This is one gun. This is not even to speak to like the repair costs of like getting other reactors and engines, which I've, I've broken down all those, but they also cost like a fuck zillion titanium and that stuff. And the Mark III's that you can research and build are actually the cheapest. Um, but yeah, like these amounts lead us to rush repair drones 
What's a rush repair drone? It's 50 platinum. 50 platinum, and it not only skips the 12 hour wait time for you to repair these items, it also replaces all these fucking materials that you would need to spend to start the repair. So, your options are 50 platinum for a rush repair drone, or hours. So many tens of hours of resources for one item. Now, anyone that has farmed for platinum in Warframe knows that the value proposition on that is that you could farm triple the amount of platinum necessary in a hundredth of the time needed to get these resources. And it is really dreadful and it feels super fucking pay to win. Like, I know you can farm platinum and, like, that's good. Just, like, for the game at large, players' abilities to farm platinum and get the things that are, like, premium only is totally... Like, I like that. That's a great thing in Warframe that we're able to do that. But the balancing on this too, where it's these amounts of resources, given the gain that you have for them, in order to get, like, one fucking item, is atrocious. Put that on top of these having randomly rolled stats. Great great thing right here. These are both Zetki Apoch Mark Threes. This one, 34% fire rate. This one, 55.6% fire rate. Like, the difference between those two things is large. And, like, they can, they're can, they just randomly rolled. So, if you want to get these, and like, if you suddenly get a better one, it's, like, another bajillion resources, another 20 hours of your time. That's absurd. Um, I honestly believe that, like, repairing shouldn't even be a thing if we're going to have these, like, randomized stats. Because these items are rare as it is, and they have random bullshit on them as well. And this repair shit is just, it's just a giant barrier to like Railjack even being playable for a lot of people. Because you're just, if you're not going to use rush repair drones to get like your Vidar reactor and stuff, uh, and like Mark III weapons, then it, I think it's likely that you're just never going to have a Railjack that is like really capable of doing the veil. Like it's just not going to happen because it is such an absurd amount of resources uh, and time. Like, just, just, just flat out. And it feels really scummy the way that it is right now with the Mark Threes and those repair drones. And also, uh, I do have a problem. Oh, it did the bug for one second. I clicked on this, but then didn't double click on this. That's a, that's a minor bug. That's like kind of whatever. There we go. Re equipped everything. Um, the other thing is that, like, this hyper strike is literally required for you to be able to really get anything done anywhere. And it has a less than 2% drop rate. And. That fucking sucks. It really just fucking sucks. Like, the, these these items, these, like, less than 2% drop rate items are going for hundreds of platinum. And you kind of need to pay that if you want your Railjack to do any damage. Because your your other alternative is to farm for a sub 2% drop rate, which is not good. <sighs> but yeah, that's, that's like, kind of where Railjack is right now. There's the really disappointing shit is that there's so much fucking potential here and that it's so clear that DE rushed this out the door early. They rushed this out for the Game Awards to be on stage and say, hey, we launched it, everybody go play it. And it's it's not ready. Plain and simple, it's not ready. Whoever rushed through the balancing on this, like whoever was up at fucking 4 a.m., like I just got to write down some numbers for this, they messed up. And like it needs to be fixed. Because it has so much potential to be enjoyable. People who did the art for this stuff. Um, the people that like worked on like how the abilities work. Like the sound design. There's all this stuff around the edges. Like the way it controls is like pretty well integrated. There's so many positives for like the giant big negative the numbers. To just be staring you in the face and making the entire experience just worse to shitty. Um... And I, I really want it to be good. I really want this to be good. I want them to like get there and get it done. And I know it's possible because all it is is number changes. That's all that's all we're at. And this is really turning into just a big rant on this shit. But I, what I really want to do here at like kind of the end of this video is I do have a section of these notes, which is really just to talk about what's good in this update. And it really boil it boils down to four things, which I've, I've gone over a little bit, but there's two extra things because I don't want to spoil anybody. Uh, there is an anomaly, which is the sentient ship in the void area. 
and that thing is fucking cool. It's a preview of the upcoming new tile set that we're going to be probably getting in New War. Um, it's immaculate. Its art is incredible. The sounds are great. Like, the way everything is designed there is fun. The new enemies are sick. I love everything about that. Everything experiencing that, great. The enemies there even also feel like they're balanced well for the difficulty for the amount of, like, sentience that you would be experiencing. That stuff feels awesome. Because I, I really want to, like, address that, like, not everything about this up update is scuffed. It's really just that, like, the balancing is fucked. Um, on top of that, the thing that you get from that sentient ship anomaly, the era quest, is extremely interesting. I'm not going to spoil it. It's really interesting. It progresses the lore in a really fun way. It has a lot of really cool callbacks for people who have been with the game for a really long time that I really appreciate. And, like, it's very obvious that they put the stuff in there that, like, matters to a lot of players. Um, and I really enjoy it and it makes me excited for what's coming up with like the new war quest line and more cutscenes and more story stuff and like character progression and things of that nature. And like I said before, I think it's unarguable that like the railjack stuff looks fucking cool. Like these incredible skyboxes, these new areas, like just doing all this stuff out in space and making it look awesome is a challenge. And they did that well, the sentient ship. Like, just from the outside, looks incredible. The new internal visuals of that I already went over. Looks amazing. Um, and then another thing that I obviously already noted is that, like, the new Arcwing movement, the changes that they made to that, really good. I think it controls way better. There is, of course, still my criticism that I do think that Blink should have its cooldown reduced by, like, one second, and then it would feel a lot better, especially for traveling long distances in Railjack. Um, but the way the Railjack moves, once you get your piloting skills, and also I think the progression through the piloting intrinsics so you get those better skills and be way more maneuverable in your railjack. I think all that stuff is really well defined and fun. Um, but it it really just comes down to the numbers ruining this update for me. Uh, like it's very obvious that it's come to the point where like the the solution for farming intrinsics that a lot of people have come to is just basically finding a way to do the Adaro farm, which is not railjack. Uh, and I am going to have a video on, like, doing that farm if you guys want to level up your intrinsics as much as I have. Um, but, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's really disappointing that, like, the way to, like, level up and get better and, like, get the MR out of this stuff like we usually want to do is, is really just to ignore Railjack entirely, do all the nodes, and then farm the intrinsics the only way that's any kind of speed. And, and that just comes back to the balance, like, the affinity balance on these missions, like, your time in to your output and, like, feeling like you progress and the amount of intrinsics you needed to high levels. Um, because by the way, getting everything to rank nine is only halfway through the current progression. And there's a whole nother tree that hasn't been unlocked yet. Um, that's a big deal. And I, I really do feel like they can fix this. That that's really what this video is, is shit's fucked. Shit is fucked right now. Shit is absolutely not in a good place right now, but it's cool. And it has been enjoyable in spots. And it's very clear that they can fix this and that they need to because it, it can be awesome. It can and should be awesome. Uh, but it, it just isn't there right now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this very long rambling rant on the current state of Railjack. Um, if you guys want, because I know you guys over on YouTube haven't seen a lot of this gameplay, I can upload some missions on how, like, these missions go with a full squad, um, like, piloting and from other angles. If you guys want that, please let me know in the comments, um, because I will up upload that stuff on, like, how these missions are being ran, uh, and I'm definitely going to do the, like, intrinsic farming guide and all that, uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where I am right now. Um, there are, of course, still a bunch of streams of me playing this Railjack content up over on twitch.tv slash brozyme if you want to watch those archives or watch me live. I have been streaming quite a bit lately since I got back. And yeah, just, that's really that. Tell me what you guys think about Railjack and its current incarnation. Um, I know there are some people that are satisfied somehow with how this combat feels. Uh, and, and tell me why, if that's for you. I'd really love to, to hear why it's satisfying for the people that are enjoying it. Um, because I just find it so unfulfilling to play in its current state. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Later, everyone.